Well, welcome back, friend and family, to Mr. Tom's Neighborhood. And what are we looking at today? Well, as you can see, we're looking at pasta. Some place maybe you all go. And that's Walmart. And you can see, there's some gaps and holes. And that's being reported all across in many areas in the United States of America. And I've been wondering what it's all about, as I've heard it too. But why is it? And I've tried to dig deep into it. I've spent many hours at it. And I'm going to go through that all with you now. Is there actually a pasta shortage in the U.S. of A? Or is it some other reason that the pasta isn't on your shelf no more? But here we are at Walmart. You can plainly see it doesn't look too healthy. Now, granted, Walmart only has a couple of brands. They have the Mueller, as you can see right here. They have the Great Value, and way over here on the corner side of this aisle, they have the Barilla. Normally, they have much more, but this is what they got. But let me tell you this, because this is all about truth. This isn't a picture taken in 2024. It's a picture that was taken in July of 2022. And that's something I want to talk about too. The pasta shortage has been going on for quite some time. In fact, if you watch my shopping videos from 2019, 2021, 2022, when we have been to Walmart, you'll see it's been a reoccurring problem for quite some time. Now there's obvious reasons when I go through the data for all of you here in a minute, what was going on? And of course, in 2020, and then, of course, 2021. But what was happening in 2022, and now, our past year, 2023? And that's what we're going to dig deep into. So hold on, grab a cold drink and a snack, pull up a chair, and let's take a deep dive into the pasta shortage in the U.S. of A. in 2023 into 2024. Now, what you're seeing is from a video I took back on January the 9th, just five days ago. Yeah, here's the pasta at Superfoods. You are all with me, sitting in the buggy and being nice. And you can see there's plenty of pasta here. Could it be jammed even fuller? Yes, it could. But you can clearly see the difference between what we saw in 2022 in Walmart, which I'm going this week, if you want to go with me, because we're going to get an update of what our Walmart here looks like too. But this was superfoods. But one thing I wanted to point out, not only were these fairly well stocked, and not what I've been hearing on social media, YouTube, Instagram, and what have you, they're all reporting that there's a pasta shortage in the U.S. of A. And you can see the difference in brands. Yeah, there's Ronco, Food Club, and way up here is Mueller. Yeah, Walmart has Mueller. And Walmart has Barilla. And Great Value. Where you're locally owned and operated food stores will most normally have just Ronco, Food Club, or their store brand and maybe Mueller too. So this was the situation at Superfoods. It don't look bad. There was plenty of pasta here if you wanted it. But why is all this happening? Well, you might be saying, Mr. Tom, well, you know, our winter wheat was severely damaged by the Arctic blast of 2022. Well, there was some damage. But as it turns out, which I will show you, it may have not been as bad as it was super sensualized and all drummed up to be when it all came out in the end. Because we're going to be looking, like always, at the data and the facts, not the speculation and running with things that are out of context. So yeah, here was superfoods. It doesn't look bad. But now we got to know a few other things about the specific wheat. Yeah. 
Because like I said, you, we all remember the Arctic blast of 2022. And then in January, February, March, oh, they were all worried about the winter wheat crop. But is that the real reason? Why we have a pasta shortage today? Well, let's take a look at that because you need to know what kind of wheat is actually used to make pasta. So let me show you too. So this gets back to the winter of 2022-2023 when we all heard because of the Arctic blast that our winter wheat production was severely injured. And there might be a reduction in crop. And we'll talk about if that actually happened in just a minute. But did you know that our hard red winter wheat isn't what's used in pasta? No, it's not. What's used in pasta is durum wheat. Yes, it is. And it's not planted in the wintertime. And here we are at the North Dakota Wheat Commission, which sort of explains all that. Just exactly when, when, when uh, durum wheat is planted. So, durum is planted between mid-April and the end of May and harvested in August to September. So it's only been out and harvested and put in the bin here, oh, about four months. It wasn't growing during the Arctic blast when everybody was so concerned about our wheat harvest. No, it was not. And here it says, in the U.S., total durum acreage equates to 2 million acres on average with total production of 75 million bushels. And that don't seem much. But the vast majority of the wheat we plant isn't for pasta. It's actually for bread, for flour, for other stuff. You know, like those pizza dough, and crust, pie crust, and what have you. And animal feed too. So understand, when they're talking about winter damage, and they'll probably be talking about it some this year, because we're about to go in to another Arctic blast. And they say another one will come in February too. So this can't possibly be why our pasta is short. So to get the data and the facts, and I know it's the government, but that's what everybody uses. It doesn't matter whether you're watching it. Ag Day, the Today Show, NBC, CBS, CNN, or what have you. Or even your favorite talking head here on YouTube. This is where all the numbers come from. There's not many other places you can get it from. Even the places, associations, growers associations, and what have you, still use the USDA data. Yes, they do. So this is the wheat outlook for December of this very past year of 2023. And yeah, we're not going to read it all. I'll link it in the description below the video. So we're not really concerned about soft red winter exports now at a 10 year high. Nope, because that doesn't make our pasta either. And then, you know, they go over wheat exports and you can see right here in 2023. And this is all wheat and it's significantly up. We're exporting more wheat. So we must have plenty, but let's go down here and take a look. You see here, this is the U.S. wheat supply and use at a glance for 2022, 2023, and 23 to 24 in millions of bushels. Understand the figures you're looking at look mighty low, but that's millions of bushels. And the one thing you need to know about all of our wheat, because you know they said we wouldn't have no bread either, you know, sometimes in 2023 because of damage the Arctic blast in December of 2022. But our beginning stock was at, before harvest began in 2023, was 582. And the reason they do this report and get it out when they do, and I will we'll be looking at the small grains report that comes out every time on September. It's sort of the bellwether of how it all did. But this gives a nice little chart and a summary. So 
our beginning stocks. That was after we used everything we had before we harvested any more. It was at 582 million bushels. That's quite a lot in December of 23 to 24. That's what we had left. Now that was down from our beginning stocks in 2022, 2023 year in December. But our production for 2023 was at 1,812,000,000 bushels. That's considerably up from the 1,650,000,000 bushels in 2022-2023. And it gives the imports which were up. Our supply total in 2022-2023, and this is all we remember, we're not talking Durham. We're going to talk about that here in a minute. But you need to know about all we so you understand. So our supply total in 2022-2023, all we was 2 billion 470 million bushels. In 2023-2024, it was 2 billion 539 million bushels. And then it gives a breakdown of what we use it for throughout the year. Food in this past year was 970 million bushels. Down from the 973 million bushels in 2022. Seed was 65 million bushels. That's the replant. Where seed for replanting in 2022 was 68 million. Feed and residual, this is to feed all the animals from chickens to cows to pigs and what have you, was at 120 million bushels. See, there's plenty of wheat for the animals. And that was up significantly from the 89 million bushels used in 2022. So our domestic total use of wheat was 1 billion 155 million bushels. And that was up 25 million bushels from 2022 where it came in at 1 billion 130 million bushels. Our exports, what we ship out, and yes, we export every year, which you think we wouldn't, if we were running low. But in 2022, we exported 759 million bushels of all wheat. This year, past year, December, it wrapped up at 725 million bushels, slightly down. So our total use was 1 billion 880 million bushels. But remember, in 2023, we had 2,539,000,000 on hand. And when I'm talking 2023-2024, this is looking from the harvest of 2023, and we'll be eating on it this coming year, which is now, 2024. When we look at the 22 the 23 year, that's what we ate this past year in 2023. We actually ate more wheat or used more. There was 1,888,000,000 bushels. Wheat consumption, as you can see, has come down. And then our ending stocks projected for this marketing year, which is 23-24, before we harvest this year in 2024 is projected to be 659 million bushels. So you ain't got to worry about your bread, your biscuits, your cakes, your pies, or what have you. And then it gives the seasonal average farm price. And you can see in 2022 to the 2023 crop year, it was 883 a bushel. Where this past year, 2023 into 2024, it's at $7.30 a bushel. 
it's actually cheaper. They say prices never go down. But what happens when you have an abundance? Well, prices can go down, especially if people are honest and not full of greed. So that's the state of all wheat in the U.S. survey. So now you know. So you don't got to be going out, stockpiling flour, stockpiling bread in the freezer, or what have you. You'll have bread in 2024. So don't worry about it. That's one thing less off your mind. No matter what people say when they go to Walmart, Aldi's, wherever, and they pick the time when the bread aisle is low. So we're at another publication that comes out every time at a certain time of year. And this is a small grain summary from the USDA too. And it's always published in September of every year. And if you look it up, you'll be able to see the small grain summary all back through the years. You can just look at the state of grains in the US of A all the way back as long as you want to. And I'll link this in the description below the video if you'd like to go through all of it too. Because it goes through all the different types of grains. Well, what they call small grains. And we're going to scroll on down here. And they got oats, if you're interested. Of course, that's an animal feed. And of course, your Quaker oats too. And then there's barley, which isn't too popular in the U.S. anymore. It normally winds up in animal feed. Of course, you still can buy barley in some stores here. But what we're interested in is wheat. Now, they have all wheat area planted and harvested, yield and production. From 2021 in this report to 2023. They always go back two years. And we'll go on through all of that because that's not what we're interested in. And then you can look at other spring wheat area planted and harvested, yield and production, and states. But that's not what we're interested too. What we're interested in right here is our pasta wheat right here. Way on down. On page 15, Durham wheat area planted, harvested, yield and production. States in the United States, 2021 to 2023. And they'll give you area planted, area harvested. They'll give you the yield. That's how many bushels an acre there was. And then total production for each year. And that's what we're most interested in. And let's just take here at total production. And you can see right here, and you can look at the different quantities per state. If you look at 2021, and this too is in millions of bushels, okay? So this is, or no, this is at 1,000 bushels. I was wrong. So there was 37 thousand bushels of Durham wheat harvest. So yeah, there was 37,000 bushels harvested in 2021. Well, 37,649 to be exact. And that was really low. But then our production came way up in 2022 to 63,981 bushels. And I know it doesn't seem a lot in the whole scheme of things, you know, we told wheat production that as we saw was over 2.4 billion bushels. But pasta isn't a major use of wheat in the world. And then this year, and they always do this in September because the wheat crop is 90 to 95 percent out of the ground. And this year, we got 59,329 bushels. It's about a 7.2% decrease. Nothing as seriously as it was in 2021 when this all started about. Of course, we saw it in 2020 because of people stocking up. It, pasta was cheap. 
And then we saw shortages in 2021. You can see them on my shopping trips to Walmart. Yes, you can. But it should have recovered in 2022, but it still lingered on. And then here we are, just getting into 2024, after seeing all the shortages, it seems, in many areas around the country, in 2023. But it doesn't seem to be the reason that we haven't got any Durham wheat. So I'm perplexed. I'm puzzled. And like I said, I spent many, many hours looking on Google, DuckDuckGo, and what have you to find anybody saying what the real cause was. Now I have found out that, you know, some say they still claim issues from the pandemic. I mean, come on. That was three years ago. And they're still bringing up the war in Ukraine. But we don't import that much. Or not. Of Durham wheat. And of course, there were the droughts. In places like Italy, where their crops were really low, and wheat prices and pasta prices spiked so much that the people went out in the streets and protested in front of government and buildings and what have you. Well, they were damn pissed off. So the government took action to reduce pasta prices in Italy. Did you know the average Italian eats 51 pounds of pasta a year? But some of what we're seeing, I think, is because of increased demand. Yes, it is. But these are the facts. And I know they don't point a finger, or at least not one I can see and analyze, of why we're seeing it. A shortage on our shelves in some areas and some stores. But in the comments below the video, I hope you'll tell me. Are you seeing this? And in what stores? And in what area? You don't got to give your address. Just a city and state would be nice so we can all get an idea of what we're all seeing all around the country or even other parts of the world. So let's wrap this all up. And I'm going to touch on what I think's going on. I have my suspicions. Because that's been driving a lot of the shortages where we always are told that we have a shortage, but we never seem to run out. You see, I know the pasta shortage in specific areas is real. Because you can go to Reddit right here. And this is a site where you can see what people have to say and comment all over the country and I guess the world. And if you look here, no pasta at Walmart. And as you scroll down, you can see even more comments. Walmart, we live in Kansas City, no pasta around. None in Northeast Kansas. No pasta in Topeka, Kansas. Yep. I've heard no recalls. I did, you know, shopping on Sunday to use my discount. The pasta section in my store was completely empty. And you can just go on and on and on. Here are the Finger Lake stores in New York. Also have no pasta. Kind of weird. And this was just a month ago. Just another worldwide pasta shortage. And they don't see any recalls, and I checked in all into that. No, it's literally empty. Only Barilla and Red Wheat GV pasta there. That's at his area. Shelves are 80% bare in Florida Walmart now. No pasta here either in southwest Pennsylvania. So, you sort of get the idea. It's real. No pasta here in Knoxville, Tennessee either. No pasta on the shelves in Kansas. Kissimmee, Florida. I mean, it's been going on a while. But as you just saw, there's no shortage of Durham wheat. In fact, it's better than it's been, especially since 2021. It was only 7.2% down from 2022. 
and I'm sure we don't use it all up. Because as you see, our ending stocks on total wheat, we never use it all up from year to year. Not saying we couldn't one year. You know, if something repeats in history, like a year without a summer. Yep, then we'd be in trouble, that's for sure. So I'm perplexed and puzzled. And I spent way a lot of time, many, many hours, searching. And I can't find the true reason. It's not because we don't got the wheat. So what could it be? Is it trucking? Well, obviously not. The trucks are rolling every day. I've looked in the plant closures. None of them to be found. I went on Barilla.com. Nope. They don't got a thing to say. And they're one of the brands that has been pretty slack and empty and skimpy these days. And of course, there's a great value brand. But as we see here, in my little locally owned and locally operated superfoods, there's plenty of Ronco, Food Club, and Mueller to go around. Now, I will be going to Walmart this week and checking out what my neighborhood and Walmart has on their shelves too. So if you'd like to come along and you behave and you'll sit down in the buggy and won't throw things in, I'll take you all along if I can. So you let me know what your thoughts are, what you're seeing in your area, and what your ideas are, and if you got any information as to the reason why. I'd want to know, and I think our whole community want to know too. And this is one of the times that the deep dive really doesn't have a definite answer for you. But it's not about the harvest that we just had. It's not about the supply of wheat. So what else can it be? Well, what is driven, dri well, what is driven inflation up sky high again? Yeah, as we all know, every time I look into it, it's not a supply shortage. Yeah, there's some contributing factors. Transportation, fuel prices, and wages too. But not to the extent that would drive what you and I are seeing these days. And whenever I dig deep, we tend to find out it's nothing more than profiteering and corporate greed. And that's one thing I'll say. You know, it's easy enough to drive up prices on a staple. All you got to do is hold it back, and people will panic. And they'll pay whatever they can to get it and stock up. Just some food for thought tonight before you go to bed. So, hey, y'all, we got another Arctic blast coming tomorrow. And I'm sure it, all the stories, speculation, and hypersensationalization will start again all too soon. But until I and the kitty crew, little Gracie, the princess of the house, see you on that next episode of Mr. Tom's Neighborhood. Y'all take care. Stay safe out there. Stay warm. Be prepared as you can. And may God bless all of you as you bless those in your lives. Goodbye and good night for now.